us. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Zoom. Uh, hello, Zoom Zooms. Hello, uh, people from the future who are watching uh, the recording. Uh, welcome to the first show of the year, January 6, 2021. Uh, building a U shaped business with Georgie and Patty. I'm Georgie. <laughs> and I'm Patty. <laughs> we thought about switching on you, but we'll we say our names today. <laughs> We got the correct name showing yeah. up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today's uh, today's topic is about uh, 2021. It's the new year. This is the um, you know this is our first broadcast of the year. This is a uh, first week of kind of getting back into the swing of things and uh, picking up the work again. I, I mean, at least that's true for me. I took time off over. Uh, over the Christmas, New Year's kind of holiday. Um, and wow, what a difference. Uh, I didn't realize how much I needed the rest until I was like day five of being pet furniture. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I needed this. I needed the downtime. <laughs> so uh, excited to be back and uh, ready to get underway. Uh, what did I say our topic was? Our topic is something about how to have a great 2021. That's right. and, getting started uh, here. Getting started. And uh, what you're going to get today is you're going to get the view from Georgie <laughs> and then the view from Patty. <laughs> this is a compare and contrast kind of an exercise. <laughs> we kind of laughed over our, our very separate <laughs> approaches about this, but hey. Exactly. Uh, so I will, uh, I'll let my partner uh, get us started and uh, you can go first. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I, I loved that. Uh, this morning, I texted Patty, one of our normal mornings. She goes, oh, do you have slides? I'm like, yeah. She goes, okay, good. You can go first. I was like, oh, okay. And I said to my mom, I'm like, dang, I kind of thought she'd go first and do the whole little intro-y kind of thing, but oh, well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it's supposed to be. So this is how it's going to be. Yeah, where the heck is my little power? It's good. it's good to challenge yourself in the new year. Oh, yeah. I'm like, sure, sounds good. I like it. Okay, there we go. I think we can see that. Da -da -da. So we are building a U-shaped business with Georgie and Patty, as we talked about earlier. We are here pretty much every Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. And we share thoughts and ideas on how to help you build a successful business that is based on your purpose, your values, and your personality. And as Patty mentioned, today we're going to talk about getting the new year off to a really great start. And you're going to get two perspectives today. I feel like my perspective is kind of this bigger, but it's the life side of things. And Patty's going to dive right into um, getting your business off to a good start. At least that's my, my thought. <laughs> we'll see. So um, your quote of the day, which is actually kind of what we ended on last year, but I thought it was a good one to start with again this year is to, you know, again, never let your memories be greater than your dream. So, um, you know, we're moving forward and I think we're often thinking about what we want for the future, what we want for the new year, which I think is a really great place to be um, so that we don't get too stuck in our past. So. New year, fireworks, woohoo, you know, it's that time of year where everybody's thinking about, or a lot of people are thinking about, you know, goals and intentions and what do I want moving forward? And I see a lot of stuff with, oh, thank God 2020 is over. Let's get rid of that year, you know, on to the next year. So I think a lot of people are in kind of that frame of mind. So I'm going to share some, I think they are probably more just bigger picture life kind of things to, to get you started. And the first thing as we move forward is really, I think everything needs to be built on a strong foundation. What is that, those foundational pieces that we have in our life that are, that kind of go with us year after year after year, and we keep building our life and our business on top of this. So the first thing, which of course I talk a lot about, you know, are of course your core values. So I think these show up in so many different areas of our life, but for your core values, do you know them? If you've been hanging around us for long enough, I'm going to guess that you do. <laughs> um, are they actionable? Do you actually for real know how to do your core values? Do you recognize them when they show up in your life? And are you using them on a daily basis? Are you using them to filter what you're doing in your business, how, what you're saying yes to, what you're saying no to, 
Or is it something that it's just an exercise you did once and you've put it up on the shelf, which if you're doing that, they're not really that useful to you. And I think it's a good idea too, to kind of go through them. This is a great time of year to go through them and go, are these still true for me? Is there something else that's, that maybe should be included here that I haven't included, but when I'm doing some reflection and really making sure that, that you're still good with what you've got there. And the next thing, your, bu your buckets, right? Do you really know what matters to you? Do you really have some key areas of your life where you're like, yeah, this is where I want to spend my time and my energy. And these are often, it's a limited number. It's not 10 buckets. It's like four or five buckets. It's not this huge number of things, but you know, what are the four or five areas of your life that really, really matter to you that you want to make sure you are getting things done in those areas? And then are you actually using your buckets? Or again, was this a really nice exercise that you did? And you're like, oh yeah, here's the things that really matter to me. I care about my relationships. I care about my business. I care about my health. Okay, now pass the chips, right? Like, like, am I paying attention to them? And I think these things take, and I'm not saying you can't have chips because I love chips too, but I think it's intentionally saying pass the chips and not just doing the exercise because maybe you put some things on your in your buckets that you don't really care about. Maybe you might have some things in there that are what you think you should care about or that should matter to you. And, and maybe they actually don't. So it's really a good time to kind of reflect and go, where do I spend my time? And am I really clear about what I really care about? And then self-awareness. You know, I think having a strong foundation of who you are, what really matters to you, what works for you in the way that it works for you. We talk a lot about, you know, your personality type. Like, are you an early morning person? Are you an evening person? Um, do you like a structured planner? Do you not? Is your desk look chaotic? Is it super organized? But what are the things that really, really work for you? And I think spending some time in reflection instead of going through, this is what the high performers do. This is what the successful people do. Those things might not actually work for you. They might, but they also might not. And the only way you're actually going to know is if you really get to know yourself really well. And you really look back at when I was doing things that worked for me, what were those things? What were the pieces that were in place? Why did they work? If you experience any of those so-called, you know, flow states, what were the ingredients that were present when you were in those, those flow states? They may be a little surprised that if you don't find them on the top 10 things, you know, list of things you should do to be a successful entrepreneur, they might be a little bit different and a little bit weird and a little bit quirky. But the only way you're going to know that is if you really spend some time um, paying attention to yourself. So these things, I think, form a really good foundation before you ever start moving into what are my goals and intentions that I want, you know, for 2021, which is the next part. So part of this, I think, is going into reflection and looking at kind of your flat tires, like fix the flat tires on your bus first. So if you're looking back at, say, 2020, maybe there's some areas that that need a little bit of fixing before you start moving forward. You know, maybe your finances are a disaster. And so before you start going, hey, I'm going to just create something totally new. What are some things that you're bringing forward that need to be fixed first before you can, you know, move on to these new, bright, shiny goals and dreams. Um, I think, especially this year, you see it, oh, 2020, so glad it's over. You know what? We're still bringing that stuff forward. So pay a little bit of attention and fix the flat first so that you can actually have a smoother ride as you move forward. And then your goals. So when you're designing your goals and thinking about what you really want, are they in alignment with those buckets, those, th those things that you say really matter? Like you can actually look at your list of buckets and go, what's the goal this that I want this year for each of those buckets? Or is it just some random thing you pulled out of the air and thought, yeah, that looks good right now. I think I'll have that. Do they align with your core values? Are your goals a way for you to actually live your core values and bring your why to life? Do they allow you to bring 
your life's work into the world, your message that you have to share? Like, are you setting goals that work with that? Or again, are they just a, hey, I saw my friend doing that. I think I want to do that this year. Like, why are you actually picking the goals that you're picking or the intention that you want for this year? Instead of just, you know, I think I'm going to create a vision board. I think it's really important to spend some time going through why do I want this in the first place and how does it actually fit with the things that matter to me? And do they contribute to your life energy? Do you actually get excited about doing them or are you just putting things on the list because you think you should? And I think especially as entrepreneurs, we get so much information about the things we should do to be successful. You know, um, maybe this year you might have on your list. This is the year I'm going to join the 5 a.m. club. And really the 5 a.m. club exhausts you. Take it off the list. You know, like it doesn't have to be on the list. Really start to pay attention to what actually gives you energy what really lights you up maybe your goal this year is to find the things that actually give you life energy instead of doing the things that people tell you that you should do and then when you have your goals and you have your intentions if you don't do anything with them if you don't actually implement that and take action absolutely nothing is going to happen like it's just a nice, pretty little picture that you have on your wall. And I don't care what anybody says about just sitting there and staring at that picture. If you don't actually do something, nothing's going to happen. So Patty and I talk a lot about this, about falling in love with the process. Like start to love all those tiny little steps, that boring stuff you're doing every day to get to where you want to go, right? I think it's really, it's fall in love with the process as opposed to just the outcome. Because if you can start doing the things that we do every day to, to hit that actual outcome, the outcome will probably happen. But if you don't start to love the things you're doing, you know, creating the content, doing the Facebook lives, all of the, if you don't actually like that stuff, or you don't ex at least recognize the value that's in that, it's going to be a lot harder. And I think it's also about recognizing that some of those processes are hard and they take effort, that it isn't just smooth sailing, but start to fall in love with the hard, fall in love with that space of, of getting a little bit agitated. And actually what, um, one of my neuroscience -y things I was listening to the other, the other day, it actually talks about when we're starting to really learn and grow and we know that we're on the path, we actually do start to feel a little bit stressed out and a little bit agitated. And it's actually a good thing because it actually keeps us moving and starts to bring our awareness more into focus. So start to see that bit of stress and agitation is kind of a good thing instead of getting frustrated by it and start to fall in love with that. And then get prepared for the obstacles that might show up in your way. Because the reality is that as you're moving towards the business that you want and you have all these great goals and intentions, there are going to be challenges. Things are not going to go as planned. It's going to be hard. So just even if you prepare yourself just for that, like you get yourself into the mindset that this isn't going to go every day the way I think it's going to be. There are going to be some days that are going to be rainy and horrible and hard and unexpected. And how do I want to show up when those things appear? What things do I have in place that are going to help me move through those things? It could be as simple as having the awareness of, ah, oh, this is one of those days. This is one of those days that I knew was going to come and I'm going to be prepared for this. Maybe it's, okay, this is the point where I need to take three deep breaths and do it anyway. Oh, this one I wasn't prepared for. Okay, what can I do here? But I think if, as long as you know that it's coming, it makes it a little bit easier instead of it throwing you so far off course and you get so stressed out and so freaked out that you just come to a complete halt and then you want to quit. You know, because there are going to be days that you want to quit. But you can't quit on those days. And I think if you know ahead of time that they're coming, it just makes it easier to prepare for them. So start to think about those things too, instead of just the, the bright, shiny, yummy goodness of it all. And then be really flexible. I think often we set these goals in January and it's like, 
this is it. This is what I'm going for 2021. It can't change. That's it. But it's important to actually review these things regularly. Look over them at least every three months. Do these things still fit? Do I still like them? Is it moving me forward to where I want to go? Are they in alignment with who I want to be and, and who I say I am right now? And if not, make changes, but make those changes based on actual real information, not just your imagination, not just because it feels hard, not just because you're frustrated today, but when you're ready to make a change, actually be able to answer the question of why am I making this change? What is the reason I have for wanting to do this? And you'll know what that is. I mean, some, sometimes it's actual like hardcore data, but you may be able to look at it and go, wow, this thing that I thought I wanted to do, I can see that it doesn't fit my values because of blah, 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 right? But so it's okay to make changes, but I think it's about making um, informed decisions, not just because you don't feel like it today. That's, I don't think that's a good enough reason to do that. And so your permission slip is to be discerning. And this has been a big word for Patty and I for, it feels like almost all of 2020, but it keeps moving forward, right? But to actually, you, you have permission to do this and to do what actually works for you, no matter what the rest of the world thinks, no matter what the guru thinks, no matter what the expert thinks, no matter what the super duper influencer thinks, to really take some time and, start, and you have permission to think for yourself and use that discernment muscle to go through it and go, oh, here's why. For me, does this work? For my business, does this work? For who I am, does this work? Instead of just kind of um, going with the flow or because somebody says so. That's a dumb reason, actually. If I do say so myself, like worst reason ever. So that's my like big picture overview of uh, getting yourself started for, for, for 2021. 20, and uh, now I'm going to let Patty tell you about some more practical businessy stuff. <laughs> um, practical businessy stuff. Practical businessy <laughs> stuff. Once you've got your life in order, <laughs> the foundations are strong. Now you can layer this layer this practical businessy stuff on top of it. <laughs> we'll carry on with an assumption. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In here that somewhere on that list of things that you want to do a meaningful goal a flat tire you want to fix in your in your life or you know that one of those things um is <laughs> is your business and in particular your sales and marketing because like that's kind of our um it's kind of our thing kind of yes. what we kind of why we're why we're here uh, and this is something that I have been thinking about um, I've put a lot of energy like more energy than I have in a long time into this transition between last year and this coming year um, and really thinking through like like you say you don't want more than four or five buckets when it comes to your business that like your business might be one of those buckets right and it's having that focus. You don't want to be trying to do a zillion different things. That is the biggest, in my view, the biggest problem that we are facing um, is this onslaught of information and opportunities and newness. There's so much stuff coming at us um, that how do we focus and how do we uh, make the most of the limited amount of time and energy and money uh, resources that we have. That's kind of where I've been, where I've been thinking, and I'm going to share some slides with you in a moment. Um, you know, basically the three, the three things that I think are the most important in terms of um, moving forward um, business-wise. I'm just going to... Uh, not very good at my resolution, New Year's resolution to um, have fewer screens open, but I found the right <laughs> one. All right, here we go. We're just gonna dive dive right into this. Da, 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 da. Um, focus thing number one, <laughs> bringing back a favorite slide from last year. Um, 
remembering you know what the core of your business is i don't think we can repeat this often enough we get so easily distracted by shiny kind of objects that are on the periphery but what we really 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 need to do is to focus on the core of what your professional services business is about you've got a limited amount of time energy resources money how do you spend that where it counts is by focusing in on the core and when you sell professional services this is what your business looks like there is you and there is your client you provide a service they provide the money do this often enough <laughs> for enough money um, and you can make yourself a really nice living you can have a thriving successful self-employed professional services business um, They've been doing this since long before funnels and the internet and social media and computers even. Um, we can get right down to this core. You offer something of value. Your clients appreciate it. They value it. They give you money. Uh, you do this over and over again. This is, this is the core of it. And when we think through business goals and certainly the area that Georgie and I help people with, when you look at the new year for 2021, what do you want for your business more than anything else? Guess what people tell us? They want more of this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they want some more money. They want they they want that revenue to be um, smoother. Uh, you, you come with more ease, come with less effort. But for the people that we work with, this is often where the struggle with not quite making enough money with it yet. We'd like to make a little bit more money with it yet. There's that kind of frustration. Well, how the hell do I do that? Um, so it's revenue, and of course, you know, answer number one is. Well, it comes from these people, right? <laughs> so it's like when you focus it, it's like, okay, um, this is this is what we're looking at here. It's like, okay, need some more clients, need some more revenue. What do we do there, right? Sales and marketing. And what's the first thing that comes up? <laughs> this is something that a lot of our uh, um, our clients, prospective clients, people that we talk to, kind of come back with is like man, there's a ton of competition out there. I, I don't know if you have noticed this, but um, are there a lot of people doing the thing that you do? <laughs> like when you think about attracting more clients, getting more business, making your business um, more successful, do you notice that there are a lot of other people out there doing this? Uh, I attended a networking event a few years back. Um, it was chit-chatting with somebody and they said, so what do you do? And I said, I do business coaching. And they're like, huh can't shake a dead cat in this room without uh, hitting a business coach. And I'm like, seriously, uh, you know, enough with the, the, um, um, the dead animal kind of uh, uh, metaphors and imagery. It's like Jackson does not appreciate that. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some truth in what she said is that, yeah, there's a lot of people who do what I do. There's a lot of people who do what uh, Georgie does. And I'm going to bet that there's a lot of people who do what you do. Um, so one of these questions when it comes to marketing, and this is a place where a lot of people get stuck. It's like, how do I stand out? How do I be unique? How do I be different? How do I convey my value? And, you know, amidst all of these people who are doing the thing that you are doing, like there's a lot of noise. <laughs> you just go to Facebook, and you see the ads after ads after ads, uh, the free webinars, the free this, the, you know, the videos, the, the, there's so much noise out there. How do you get seen? How do you get heard? How do you stand out? And how do you compete with the 800 pound gorillas in your market? Like, what about those people that are, you know, almost celebrity status? They got a ton of followers. They have a ton of money. They're spending a million dollars or more a year on Facebook advertising. Like, how do you compete with that bright and shiny and sparkly with glossy hair and shiny teeth and all that? It's like, how do you compete with that? Like, these are, these are kind of the questions that people ask. Um, and this is the frustration. And it, it can actually be a little bit discouraging to look out there and go, oh man, a lot of stuff going on here. Like, you know, what do I do? Um, and I have an answer for you. <laughs> I have an answer. I have an answer for the thing that, that um, 
seems to get neglected in the conversation. I just don't hear a lot of people talking about this, but I think that this is, I think this is the answer to everything. Um, and it's quality. Um, and, and quality is one of those things that's a little hard to nail. Uh, if you ever read uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, um, <laughs> if you understand it, you can explain it to me. I've read it a few times. So there's a lot of focus on this question about what exactly is quality. Uh, but quality is one place where you can, where you can stand out, where you can be unique, um, and where you can grow your business. Uh, because, 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 here's, here's, here's something. Every time I talk to um, a successful, established professional service provider, the ones that are making really good money, they have a booked up calendar, they've got lots of clients, they're doing really well. And I say, what's your secret? What's the magic? What's working in your marketing? And I will tell you every time, every time, every time, repeat business and referrals. Repeat business, referrals, sometimes they say word of mouth, <laughs> same difference. Uh, where does that come from? It comes from here, from quality in the service that you are providing. Uh, how do I get referrals? Make a service that people will tell other people about. <laughs> how do I hold on to my clients? Provide a service that, uh, that, um, that they get value out of, be responsive to what it is that they're asking for, what they want, and to keep in mind that when we look at quality, see even quality is even written on the box. I didn't even notice that till right now. The quality is written on the box. Um, quality is in the eye of the beholder. It, it's, you might think that you're delivering the most amazing thing ever, but what matters is what are your clients getting out of it? Uh, one of the things that Georgie and I were experimenting with this past year was offering workshops in a butt in seats, get it done style. So we would um, deliver a very small piece of content um, and then we would have people actually do the work uh, while they were, you know, in, you know, in our virtual room. Um, so, it, you know, we could offer a six, six and a half hour workshop where maybe we were talking for 30 or 45 minutes total. Mostly it was telling people what to do, and getting them to do it and waiting and sending each other little chat messages like 20 minutes. This feels like 20 years because you know what? It's really boring um, to deliver something in that way. However, quality being in the eye of the beholder, what we got in terms of feedback from our clients is this is amazing because it feels really good to attend a workshop and to leave with something done, not to leave with a whole bunch of notes and a whole bunch of overwhelm. And what am I going to do? Um, like, when am I going to find the time to do all this cool stuff that I learned today? And instead they could leave going, holy crap, that was amazing. Um, I got all this stuff done. Uh, so you know, it's kind of like paying that attention and like, how do we add more of that into what we do? And this is actually, this is my prediction um, for the year coming up is we're going to see a lot more of this kind of um, get something done at the event, get something done during the coaching session. I'm, I've, I'm switching up the way I coach my individual clients too. It's more of a collaborative thing. Let's work on your copy together. That's what we're gonna do during our call. I'm not gonna just give you a bunch of homework so you can go and do it and then come back to me. Let's do it on the call. Uh, and the workshops be like, let's do it in the workshop uh, because that's a quality service. It's because if people get value out of that um, and, and they're happy. Uh, but that comes from their perspective. From, from our perspective, and I could tell you this, and if you've done this yourself, you'll know what I mean, is it can feel like maybe we're not giving enough value because we're not talking a lot. And we're, we've got, uh, you know, we're sharing, you know, 2% of what we could talk about on this particular topic. Rather, you know, we're sharing this small amount, but it, it's, it's the amount that people can, can do something with and and the service really helps them and this is you know when you think about adding quality you know to your service think about what does that look like from their perspective and what can you do like paying attention like georgie mentioned earlier it's like 
the, the data. Part of that data is how are people responding? What do they love? What do they rave about? You know, when they say, well, these, you know, these get a, put your butt in the chair things are the best things ever. Um, it's like, okay, maybe we should do more of those, even though they're not necessarily all that much fun. <laughs> but uh, for us, uh, lots of fun for, for our clients, right? But, but how can you set your services up so that you delight your clients? Because when you have delighted clients, they come back. They stay with you for for another year they sign up again they refer somebody to you they give you great testimonials even without you having to ask um, this is the stuff that leads to um, that level of success that the successful people have <laughs> is that people rave about their stuff um, and this is about this is more about um, offering a few things and be really 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 good at it versus trying to do a whole bunch of things for everybody uh, so there's a question for you in terms of going forward and um, improving your business in order to get more clients and make more money is how can you delight people how can you be even better because i'll tell you something this get in the get sit your butt in a chair workshop as an example that georgie and i do um that is really hard for the 800 pound gorillas to to compete with because uh, we can give individual feedback to 20 people in a classroom or to 10 people in a classroom. We can make time. We can give personal feedback. We can be available. If you have a thousand people on a Zoom call, you can't do that. Um, so it doesn't scale. And this is often a really good place to look at. Like, don't worry about scaling, <laughs> you know, especially if you need like 40 clients to, to make the money, you make your money goals. Don't worry about scaling. Worry about how do you delight people? How do you, how do you do something that's not scalable? Because that's where the quality is going to be. You lose quality when you scale. So how can you delight people? How can you add more quality to your services? That's thing number one. Uh, thing number two is, you know, how can you get your, how can you get better at sharing your expertise? Uh, this is what this is what you offer. It's your expertise. It's your experience. It's what you do. This is how you help clients. How do you get better at putting that out there? And a really good question to ask here, once again, from the client's perspective, um, is what would make your emails, your blog, your video, your social media so good that people wouldn't want to miss it? If you subscribe to newsletters, if you subscribe to podcasts, to videos, if you follow somebody on Facebook, who are the people where you're like, oh, I want to hear everything that person has to say, where you are excited because their marketing email shows up in your email. What is it about that? Like, think about that perspective from you. It's like, what makes it awesome? Why do you want to read it? What? makes you look forward to it? What do you like about it? Uh, do you share it with other people? Do you comment on it on social media? Do you tell people about this person? And Georgie and I get together on these calls before we go live and we are very often talking about uh, Georgie likes podcasts so she'll be talking about podcasts that she's seen I like reading emails so I'll be talking about emails or uh, you know an article that I've read and it's just like, what is it about that that stands out amongst the crowd? I've been cleaning out my email inbox, unsubscribe, 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 unsubscribe. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, what is making the difference between unsubscribe and I'm keeping this one? <laughs> you know, the difference between unsubscribe and drag into inbox because I don't want it to get lost in my promotions folder, right? So what are those, what are those qualities? And how can I do more of that um, in my business? this year how can you do more of that in your business you can contribute to the noise and spew out low quality stuff but nobody's going to be dragging that thing from promotions into inbox to make sure that they get it um, so how do you make it awesome what do you need to do um, to make that awesome uh, and uh, the third piece to this you know it's great to be awesome but being awesome all by yourself in a room is it going to be very effective so it's like, how do you get that out there? How do you meet more people? How do you get in front of more people? How do you become uh, more visible? Um, 
how do you get in front of more potential clients? And you'll notice even in this cute little uh, cartoon picture I've got on the slide, that all those people look really enthusiastic and they're carrying money. And it's like, it's not enough just to get in front of random people. It's how do you get in front of more potential clients? And that doesn't mean that you have to have um, an email list of, you know, 15,000 people before you can start making money. Um, I have very successfully been uh, making a living at this business uh, for the last eight years. My email list has 437 people on it as of this morning. That's it. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Um, how can you get in front of more potential clients? How can you build better relationships with them? How can you, you know, this would be, you know, Georgie's kind of uh, side of the screen here. But, um, you know, when you think about quality, it's like the quality of those relationships. How can you connect with, um, with people in a better way? Um, you know, how can you be more, more human? How can you connect with people? Uh, so those are kind of, you know, my three pieces of advice in terms of making 2021 amazing. Like if at the end of the year, you focus on delivering an amazing service that um, your clients think is awesome and they stay working with you and they refer and they give you great testimonials. And if you share your expertise on a regular basis in a high quality way and get it in front of people who can buy from you, it's like, where would your business be a year from now? That uh, is what I have to say. I had to unmute myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good. And I think often we, it's, it's a lot of that slowing down process a bit too, right? Like it's like slowing down to take some time and figure out you know, what is quality for me? How would I know what, what that quality is? What do my clients say um, is quality for them? And then really spending some time to develop my products and services and my business around that and, and being patient instead of just how fast can I throw a program or a course or something out there and just keep like say spamming people with stuff that no one really wants to hear um instead of taking a little bit of time to really get clear too i think on which is what you know we talk about this a lot right really, really what it, what is the message that you want to share what is the work that you do um and then focusing in on that that one thing really you know and everything you do is around that and and you know it's the it's like there's this feedback loop, right? It's like yes. you put stuff out there, you get feedback. You change up what you put out there, you get more feedback. You put a service out there, you work with a client, you find out what they want, what do they want more of, right? One of the things that, that's been like last year, which is just like so amazing, is doing this show. Every week, I show up and I talk about the stuff that I do. And we see what kind of a response we get from people you know, what are the episodes that people talk about? Well, what are the episodes that give us the comments? Um, you know, what do people want more of? And we get better. Like, we get better at figuring out what we're going to talk about. I made a list um, towards the end of last year, but like, you know, the core topics that I talk about over and over and over again, fully half those things on that list were things that were new last year because I show up every week talking. It's like I accelerated more in terms of sharing information and figuring out what I was about and getting more articulate about um, where I stand and how I teach things and how I describe them and what's important and what's not and what do people respond to and what do people want um, more in the, you know, the eight months or whatever that we did the show than I had in the eight years previous. It's just like, whoa, that's, that's pretty amazing. So this practice of showing up on a regular basis and talking about what you do and getting better at it and being willing to be a beginner and kind of suck in the, in the beginning and to get the feedback from people because that's the important thing. Like, 
like, um, <laughs> I heard this the other day, George Cow was talking about this. He's like, you spent 10 years writing the perfect article <laughs> in your head. Like you can spend 10 years at your desk writing it and then putting it out there. You think it's perfect, but nobody's interested. It's like, it has to be a, a, a kind of a back and forth. You know, it's like doing the workshops. It's like, I've been delivering workshops for eight years. It's like, this year we do the button seat thing. And it's just like, let's try this. And we try it. And it's like, wow, that's awesome. Um, but you don't know until you try and, and, and until you get the feedback. When people say, this is amazing. I really like this. We need to do this more often. When's the next one you're having? It's like, oh, okay. That tells us something, doesn't it? And so it's like. It's it's so true. And I think that's such a such an important piece of it is when you are putting things out there is is to really, you know, really work on your listening skills and pay attention to what people are saying to you. What is the feedback that you're getting, you know, and really hear what what those people are saying and try to remove your filters as much as possible um, and, and make shifts based on that. You know, which could be completely different from you may set a goal or a vision for what you want your business to look like for 2021 and you might launch a program or do something and the feedback that you get shifts you in a bit of a different direction than where you thought you were going to go. But it's based on that real life information from your paying clients, like the people that want to give you money and hire you for the things that you do, but it may get delivered in a different way than what you thought. And that only comes from really from listening and paying attention and being and being flexible, having that flexibility to, to kind of shift based on real life information that you're getting, not the imaginary stuff that we made up or um, the formula you got from the expert who's probably or maybe not. Well, they've definitely not been in your exact shoes, but they, they're sharing what's worked for them, which may not work for you. That's that's kind of true about um, what we do as well. It is it's one of the reasons why um, I've been, I'm really quite hesitant, you know, when people ask me, it's like, so Patty, what did you do to build, to build your business? And I'm like, it's not relevant because <laughs> you're not me. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you know, what works for me um, might not be exactly right for somebody else. But I, I think, but I think that there are some common threads in there like the, there are some things that are absolutely true like one thing is if you want to if you want people to buy from you you have to describe what you do in a way that they understand in a way that they see the value like it has to be something that they want from their perspective like you have to be able to put yourself in your client's shoes and the sooner you, you, you get that sorted and you're able to look from their perspective, the, the easier the whole marketing thing gets. And we always land back in our own selves, back in our own brain. How do I explain this thing to them? How do I get them to buy my thing? Uh, instead of say, okay, I'm them. What am I looking for? What would be most helpful to me? What are my actual problems? What would I ask for? What are these words that I would use, um, you know? It's like, that's kind of a, it's kind of a given. It's a principle. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you're going to have to talk to people in some, you're going to have to talk in to people. some way. So the better you can get at communicating with people, like up in your, your, your people skills game in some way, the easier it's going to be because, you know, those clients that you have are, they're people in most cases. <laughs> It's all, you know, it, it is, it's, it's communication. Exactly. It's communication. You know, marketing is communication. People forget that. They start to think, oh, marketing is Facebook ads. Marketing is social media. Marketing is funnels. Marketing, it, it's not the, it's not the mechanics. Exactly. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And who's seeing those Facebook ads? Who's reading those Facebook posts? Exactly. And, and are you saying what you want to say? And are they hearing what you're saying? It's, it's like, when you think about, you know, sending emails or Facebook posts or doing videos where you can't have a back and forth conversation, like it's harder that, to do that this way than it is to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. Because 
you know, I can say stuff and I, I'm not looking at, I don't see confused kind of looks on, on people's face. I don't know if what I'm saying is landing or not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm having fun talking. I'm having fun showing slides. People get it. I, I, I don't get that the visual feedback, right? It's, it's so important to pay attention to that. And so many people like just ignore that, that whole idea that, oh, you know, is it landing? Do people get it? <laughs> exactly. Well, it goes back to like, like when you were talking about um, this morning, right? And the, the quality, like, ooh, just something pop in the Q&A box. Ooh, here's a Q, here's a Q, you can Q. do an A. Um, how do we know if what we are saying in Facebook or ads is landing just by who clicks? Yeah, no kidding. Facebook provides a whole bunch of um, analytical kind of tools. Are people clicking? Like how many people has it shown it to? And are people clicking? Those are really great. Um, those are really good, good questions. But here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Facebook ads and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Make sure you have a message that lands with real people before you try to automate it and do a one-sided conversation on Facebook. Like, there's a secret to success, right? The people who make a gazillion million dollars with Facebook ads um, know this. They are brilliant with this. What do they have in their ads? They have the stuff that their clients and their customers told them. They have fantastic language and they have really expensive copywriters. And those really expensive copywriters make sure that they have client language because <laughs> that's what sells. So um, in terms of the Facebook ads, does anyone click? That might be about what you're saying. It might also be about what our audience you're targeting. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables that make it really, really, really complicated. But one giant step in the right direction there is to have conversations with real live human beings, find out what they respond to, get really good at selling your thing one-to-one -one with people. And then you'll know what to say and there will be zero question about it. It'd be like, yeah, this is what I have to say. This is like, you know, some form of this sort of language is gonna land with people. And you know how I know? Cause it lands with people. Cause when I say it in person, people sign up. Um, and too often we, we want to go right to that. How do I get this in front of a million billion people by running a Facebook ad, but we're, we have no idea whether the words are going to land or not. Exactly. It's that forgetting that there's people on the other end of that and who are your people and what do they want to hear you say? And I think even when we're looking at what is, you know, a successful ad, um, we often forget about why are you posting the ad? How would you know? What's the intention of this ad that you're running? Are you looking for clicks? Are you looking for engagement? Are you looking for people to sign up for your, um, your mailing list? Are you looking for people to just buy your product? And then how do you say the right thing in the way that you've said it to real life people to get them to do those things? But it's, I think sometimes we look for just this, this kind of blanket measurement for the success of an ad or something. And there's, there's a lot of variables that, that go into these things as opposed, it's kind of like, like you're saying, I'll just run a Facebook ad and I'll get lots of clients. Mm -hmm. There's about a million things in the middle of that, you know, um, and we, we, for some reason, we don't think about it. Maybe because we've been led to believe that Facebook ad, lots of clients. That's all you got to do. Oh, Three bucks a day or a dollar a day or whatever, the, whatever it is. <laughs> Make a hundred thousand dollars in six minutes. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. With Facebook ads, <laughs> you know, and there's, there's so many pieces in that. And a lot of it comes down to that those fundamental pieces, the pieces that we talk about over and over and over again, right? What is your message? Is it clear? Do you have real life information from real life people? What are their words? How do they, um, how do they say it? You know, it's, it's all of those pieces. It's the, the pieces we want to, I think, skip and not do because they require some time and they require some patience and 
it, it's not as sexy and fun as, you know, $100,000 in six minutes, but that's the information that creates those things. Yeah. It's everyone wants a shortcut. Everyone yeah. wants to go from zero to a hundred with <laughs> no time at all. And it's like, and the people who and the people who sell shortcuts know that <laughs> exactly, and we keep buying them. <laughs> like, of course we do, right? And I think this is where that discernment muscle comes in sometimes too. It's like, hang on a second. Yeah. Well, you can keep buying shortcuts. You can buy shortcuts and you know get get sucked into the into the promise over and over again and eventually you get get to the place where you go wow yeah that shortcut shit doesn't work yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to either quit or put the work in exactly put the information into the shortcut yeah oh another question i love the questions i like the cues Woohoo! okay um i have a lot of transcripts of one-on-one -on -one conversations but don't know how to organize it so it's usable in copy I guess writing the 10 ways people express a specific challenge and then experimenting with which way people respond. Is there something I could test in a poll in a Facebook group or asking people for feedback on my mailing list? Do you have people to ask? Like, who are you asking? Here's the thing. If you have transcripts of conversations with people, that's amazing. That is wonderful. That is awesome. It's it, like it's not about organizing the entire transcript. This is what I would suggest: is you kind of you look at the transcript and you go through it and you go, okay, what are they asking for? What are they complaining about? What are the problems that they are experiencing that you can help them with? Never mind, you know, it's raining a lot here. It's like it's like if you don't help them with umbrellas um raining a lot here doesn't matter right but it's like what are the things that they're complaining about or questions that they're asking that are related to your service what's their language take a highlighter copy and paste cut that stuff it's like that's what they're looking for this is this is you know this is my you know my before picture these are the things i don't like these are the problems i'm having and this is my after picture this is what i would prefer to have that's what you're after those two things it's like pull those and then and then try them. Exactly. It doesn't it look doesn't... for the patterns, right? Like look for the patterns. It you'll be like, oh wow, I went through 20 tra transcripts that 18 people told me um, that the big problem that they had is that um, you know they couldn't get their kids to do what they said. I can't get my kids to do what I tell them to do. It's like, okay, 18 out of 20 people said that. That might be a really good angle to go with, to go with in terms of, of uh, sharing some content. How to get your kids to do what, they, what you tell them to do. That would probably be a really good video or article to write. Yeah, and put down what you think their challenges and what they're looking for are. Like, don't look at it actually through your filter. Do your best to pretend like this, like you don't know anything and you are looking at this kind of like a little detective or whatever, and you are noticing the different patterns and the words that, that people say, because if not, then you kind of try to skew things and you are, you're only really looking for what you think you already know. And you'll miss the boat if you do that. Like, like you will, you will make this so much harder than it has to be, but if you will actually put down what you think you know and just go through it and go, huh, look at that. That is not what I thought was gonna show up here, but that's what they're saying. That's what they're actually, that's what they're asking for. Yep. Okay, let's, let's go with that for your, for your marketing. Like this is, this is what you say. Like I, from experience, um, from the wise Patty, um, like literally it makes it so freaking easy but you have to put your own self um, away and, and to the side, because if you don't, you just, you, you, you won't see it. And it's, yeah, makes it so, so, so easy. Is this your address? So easy. One moment, please. Is this your address? Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> live show, people, live show. <laughs> um, 
yeah like I think often we want to we want to complicate things and they don't have to be um as complicated as we want to make them I I, I feel sometimes like like I give away like the big secret over and over and over and over and over and over again because this is it this is like the secret the secret is yeah. to have conversations with people and listen to what they say and use their words back at them that's it that 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 is the magical miracle of marketing messaging look at all that alliteration man um yeah. <laughs> it really is it, it's like what what do people ask for and for some reason for some reason people just don't want to go there um you know but but it's just so easy your clients your potential clients will tell you how yes. to sell to them they will give you your language i get paid to write copy for people and help them with their messaging i'm just giving it all away this is how i write good copy is find out what people are asking for and use their language like that's it so that's true. The, it's that's that's the 20% that's going to give you 80% of your results. Well, and then that's just it with with the sales too, right? It's learning to listen to what people are saying to you, what they want in their words and then showing how what you do solves that problem in the way that they want it solved. And it's be it, it's it's not the script. I think it's one of the reasons I hate scripts is because you can have the blocks of a script, but the actual words, you honestly don't even really want the actual words because the words are going to come from the person that you're talking to. Like you have the, the concept, I guess, and, and like say the building blocks, but the actual words that go in that, they come from the person you're talking to. Absolutely. Like that. And like, if there's one skill that you really want to, to learn, it's that it's learning to listen and communicate in that way from the space of the other person and your cell your 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 sales will increase your ability to um have less phone calls with people <laughs> will will increase shorter phone calls like it's what does it yep and it becomes easy like honestly you'll sit there and go really that that was like seriously but that's that's how it works it is so, how it works so good all right what do we got so, coming uh, up happy 2021 <laughs> <laughs> we uh well we we're going to be back here uh we next week. Be back here next week with uh with another show um surprise 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 but i i am offering a uh, group coaching program this year for writing button seat writing that content listening to those um listening to those clients um and uh, georgie and i together in our momentum program um help people with the taking action <laughs> they're getting better at talking about what you do and uh getting better at uh having uh, human relations <laughs> yes exactly exactly yeah we have our our new projects and our old projects and and if you're stuck of course you know you can find us at U Shape business give us a call we do have a uh um a, i don't know if you want to call it over calling an assessment but we'll get on the phone with you and help you figure out where you are and uh what we can do to help you move through some things that might be stopped might have stopped you in 2020 to help your 2021 um create the u-shaped business that you really 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 want excellent <laughs> yay <laughs> have have a have a great day have a great week we will see you uh next year <laughs> next year next year next, yeah. no, <laughs> next <see> week <laughs> next week we will be back yeah, that's right that time same bad channel. <laughs> right now. Bye.